welcome back to Heather's Space. Today I have got a quick and simple tutorial for you. Um, I am super busy with work stuff and I have a to-do list as long as my arm, um, so I'm going to keep it brief, I'm sure you're busy too. Today I'm going to show you how to give a really standard doormat, just a really quick and easy update to just give it a bit of fun, so I'm going to turn it into this. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Ooh. This thing sheds. Probably not the best idea to bring it up to my bedroom. I'm covered in bits. <laughs> you will need just a standard doormat, you know, like your bog standard one that you can get. I think Ben picked ours up um, for about a fiver from B and Q. Some card and um, a craft knife or a Stanley knife and a pencil to make your stencil. And then all you need is a little paintbrush and some black acrylic paint. As you can see, I had some little hands helping me out, showing me what you would need, and he helped me out with this tutorial today, so thank you, Alfie. Right, so, first thing to do is to um, make your stencil. Now, I have to admit that the eye is not the easiest of designs to cut out, but I, um, I'd seen um, some printed cushion covers on um, a blog I really love, wildandgrizzly.com, I'll pop the link below, and um, I wanted to use that eye design and a bit of a wink as well. Love a wink. So I sketched out the design onto the card, um, worked out which areas I wanted the paint to go into, so and then cut those out with the um, Stanley knife. So I had a stencil to work with. Um, I laid the doormat down and then positioned the stencil on the top and then sort of held it in place with a bit of masking tape. It doesn't keep it completely still, but it just stops it shifting too much. And all you have to do is dip your paintbrush into the paint and then sort of stipple it onto the surface of the doormat. Don't be too gentle with it, you need to get that paint right down onto the bottom of the bristle. So you really do have to sort of push it down on, but obviously make sure you're keeping within your stencil lines. Once you have gone across the whole of that first eye, you can carefully lift off the stencil and then you'll need to fill in those little gaps left by the stencil. So just do that freehand. And you want to turn your stencil around 180 degrees and position it next to the eye you have just painted. So you want the corners of the eye to line up. Again, use some masking tape to stick it down into place. Now this time you are only going to paint up to the corners of the eyes. You're going to do the bottom lid and the eyelashes, which are now at the bottom, and that's it. And that will give you the... <laughs> what am I saying? So yeah, just paint away in the same way that you did the first eye, carefully lift off the stencil, and that's it. Just leave it to dry and it is done. I love it, so awesome. I've actually um, pulled out of the drawer, I had an old set of letter stencils that I haven't used for ages, and I've done one um, for the back door as well that just says mwah, mwah. That's it really, um, that plain boring doormat now is a bit more fun, a bit more quirky, and sort of suits our family home a bit better. Again. If you fancy reading a full tutorial, there's one on the blog growingspaces.net and I will leave the link below. If you have enjoyed this video, thumbs up as usual, please do subscribe, there's um, quite a few videos up now so you can have a good old sesh going through those and I will hopefully see you back here next week. Bye!